Every so often, a game can take us entirely by surprise and give us a brand new experience that we simply weren't expecting. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Enshrouded, a game that many, myself included, weren't even aware of until it was released on January 24th. We'll take a look at what the game does well, aspects that could use some improvements, and ultimately look to answer the question, is it worth the money? If you enjoy the video or find it useful, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. So, admittedly, I sort of missed the original hype around Enshrouded's release, as I think many did, and as a result, I was jumping in a few days later than the release itself. I've now racked up about 30 hours of playtime so far, and I think that's a solid amount of time to be able to form an opinion on the experience properly. Let's kick things off with the world itself. Now, Enshrouded is branded as a co-op survival action RPG by the developers, and like just about any game under the survival survival banner, the surroundings you're in make one heck of a difference to the experience. This is, to me, one of the standout aspects of the overall product of Enshrouded. There's a range of biomes and environments to explore, each one is different to the other, and each one clearly takes on its own personality. This is reflected in not just the nature in the area, but also in the buildings, the kind of places you can explore, and the enemy types you can expect to encounter. That said, I have had some issues with low risk resolution textures popping up here and there, and speaking with some friends, they've experienced the same issue across various different settings, so hopefully that gets fixed in the not too distant future. Now, if you didn't know this already, Enshrouded doesn't use any procedural generation or randomization of any kind in its map design. I feel like it's important to know that before you jump in, because ultimately this does affect replayability in a meaningful way, it means you won't get a brand new experience if you decide to start again. That said, what it also means is that the developers can put a little more of a personal touch on the whole thing, and in Enshrouded, it shows. As a result of opting for this method of design, you're never far away from something else to discover on your first playthrough, and what you do discover is interesting and thought out, with multiple examples of environmental storytelling so that you can piece together what happened long before you arrived. One thing Enshrouded is certainly not is a running simulator, and the world is chock full of points of interest interests, side quests to discover whilst exploring in return for some loot, puzzle solving in the form of ancient structures that are holding untold secrets, and much more that I wouldn't want to spoil for you. It's definitely not a small map by any means either, so what they've managed to achieve in this department is pretty impressive. To help with this, Enshrouded does have a fast travel system, but it's very clever in the way that it's implemented. Essentially, there's some big towers scattered around the map. To clear it, you'll have to work your way through a set of puzzles to eventually reach the top floor of the tower. There is of course some loot along the way, but the main goal is to reach the top floor. Doing so will unlock a fast travel point. You can also fast travel back to your home base, once you have one set up, at any time. This means you're spending more time exploring new areas and much less time getting back home from those areas or traversing terrain you've already wandered through. It's simple, effective, and smart in the way that it prioritizes new areas you haven't come across yet. So the world itself is a net positive, so long as you're not bothered by the fact that it's not procedurally generated. Next, I want to get into what I believe is the biggest issue Enshrouded has right now, and that's co-op. It's fair to say that a lot of players like to experience games like Enshrouded with a friend, right? After all, the Steam page itself markets it as a co-op game from the developer's description, which kind of makes this issue even worse. To explain this in as simple terms as possible, there are a lot of quests in Enshrouded, and those quests direct you on where you should be going next in your journey. They also contain meaningful milestones like recipes for crafting, weapons, XP, and so on. The problem is that that these quests are tied to the server and not the individual. This means that if you aren't on the server when something is completed, you don't see any of the benefits for that at all, but it still then marks them as completed. You'd get no XP, no loot, and perhaps most importantly, it could lock you out of acquiring something that is needed for progression later. Now, the upside is the community has already voiced its concern with this feature, and it's now the most requested feature on the developer's website, where they've allowed people to upvote suggestions for improvement to the game. So if you're watching this a few weeks from when this video was initially uploaded, please do check whether this is still the case, because it may well be that the developers have changed this by then. That said, 
said, right now at least, it's a pretty big oversight from a game that markets itself as co-op. It means that in order to have the best experience, you need to limit your co-op playthrough to a number of players that you know will be online regularly enough so that you're all on together when completing quests, and realistically, we shouldn't have to do that. Waiting for people to log in in order to ensure they don't miss out when the game could have just opted for individual questing to allow each player to do the questline at their own pace is very frustrating. It's an odd design choice, frankly, and one much of the community doesn't seem to agree with. Another thing on a similar note to keep in mind if you're looking at playing in Shrouded with friends is that there is currently no difficulty customization to the game and no difficulty scaling either. There is one fixed difficulty, and as a result of this, the more players you add, the easier the game becomes. Now, at first I was playing with two friends, and to be honest, we found it pretty easy. There was barely any challenge associated with what we were doing for the most part, and this wasn't for a short amount of game time either. We took on two bosses, explored three different biomes, and put in a total of about 12 hours together. I'm hopeful that this might change with the boss encounters later on in the game, but for now, they all seemed very focused on one-player tactics. They would aggro on one player, and all their abilities would be targeted at that one player, which meant the other two members of the group could basically just stand there and attack for free, without having to consider dodging, blocking, or anything else. For a group, this leaves the boss fights feeling a little bit unsatisfying. It's a survival game, after all, and these encounters should feel challenging for a small group. We actually felt more pressured by the regular fights out in the world with regular enemies than when we fought the bosses. I feel like a simple solution would have just been to offer some basic customization, allowing the server host to jack up health, damage outputs, and other enemy stats, or just have encounters scaled to the amount of people present in the current area. After I'd spent some time playing with friends, I went on to explore the world by myself for a while to see if things were any different. In short, yes, it was more difficult, and I had to think about things a little bit more. It was generally more satisfying, and whilst it still wasn't really challenging, it was certainly a better experience than roaming with some friends, and I feel like those people that prefer a difficult survival game should aim to play solo for the best experience, and that's a bit of a weird thing for me to say as someone that's usually a very social gamer. All in all, co-op sadly feels like a bit of an afterthought between the lack of scaling difficulty options and issues with server-based progression, and that's a real shame, because this could take Enshrouded from a good game to an amazing game, with what feels like wouldn't have been too much additional development time. Now, it's not all bad. Combat is actually pretty good. There's some weapon variety at play, with two-handed weapons, one-handed weapons and shields, wands, staves, bows, you get the idea. There's a lot to choose from, and although each weapon starts with a basic attack, you can then build on this with the use of the skill tree that Enshrouded employs. There are tons of different benefits available in the tree depending on which way you decide to go down it, eventually allowing you to pick up unique attacks to add to your repertoire. The skill tree itself is a really strong part of the game in my opinion, offering varied ways to play and supporting a co-op playstyle so you can work to form a functional group, whether you decide to take on the role of a tank, a healer, a battle mage, or a ranger build, and there's plenty more viable options than that too. Melee combat, for me, has been especially satisfying and rewarding as you start to learn when you can parry certain enemies' attacks to get an opening. Bringing up your shield just at the right moment parries the attack an enemy makes, which you can then use to land a very heavy hitting strike if you're like me, and win for a tanky melee build. Some of the parry windows on certain enemies can be huge, others smaller, which means you start to learn and master combat progressively against different different enemy types, of which there are plenty to go up against, from overgrown mushroom men to beefed up furries and banshee ghost things that I can't even hit so I just stand there and look pretty whilst my ranged teammates kill them for me. Sometimes the enemies act a little bit weird on different elevations so you can use stairs against them, but other than that, pretty satisfying combat with lots of different enemies to encounter. Okay, so we've looked at exploring the world, and we've looked at the sorts of threats and combat we can expect while doing so, but what about when you're looking to build a base? Well, for the avid base builders out there, I'm happy to report that Enshrouded is very much your type of game. The flexibility with building controls is spectacular, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get wild with the building in this game. It's got a really pleasant system that allows you to select blocks of various shapes and sizes with ease, and they easily fit together. 
There's lots of furniture options available, and they actually have a purpose too, by helping to increase your comfort level, which essentially applies a rested buff. This rested buff then lasts longer depending on how high the comfort level was when you obtained the buff. Oh, and don't miss out on the terrain tool either. You might default into thinking that you need to mine the ground with a pickaxe, but there's actually a handy tool when using a construction hammer that allows you to not just level ground, but also to add terrain to an area. This has always been a bit of a gripe for me with survival games I've played in the past, so it's good to see that they've thought this through and provided efficient solutions to known issues. Repairing your equipment at your base of operations is nice and easy too. All you need to do is interact with the workbench to repair all of your equipment in one button press with no material requirements. This means no annoying maintenance mechanics where you have to keep pulling really small amounts of materials out of your chests just to fix different tools, weapons or armour pieces, and you can even find some anvils out on the road too when you're exploring to allow for repairs if you've been experiencing a lot of combat and need to tend to your gear before the next fight. As for storage, there's all the keybinds you'd expect for quick moving and sorting of items, whether it be in your inventory or in a chest at your base. Now, there was one annoyance in the early stages where workbenches weren't able to pull supplies from a nearby chest, but I was pleased to find out that later on, you can basically unlock a chest that can do this, so problem solved there. It's actually really nice to see them put this behind some kind of progression and gives you something else to aim for. The one thing that I wish they would add is a button to craft multiple items at once. So far I haven't seen this and you kind of just have to spam the craft button as many times as you need to make something, otherwise inventory management is nice and easy. As you complete more quests within the game you'll gain NPCs for your base that unlock further ways to craft different items, so it has a pretty staggered approach and I think that's important for a game like this. It's just another meaningful way to provide you with goals and things to achieve. You can also upgrade your equipment, and it's called enhancements in Enshrouded, and whilst it's nice to be able to make weapons stronger, I do feel like it's really easy to upgrade them. Lots of enemies drop these things called runes, and you get a bunch of them when dismantling weapons you don't want as well. These runes are the only components to enhancements, so you basically just upgrade them to the maximum level right away. I feel like this would have been a more meaningful system if they'd actually have implemented some other materials as part of the upgrade process for weapons, but that's just my two cents and it's not a huge game breaking issue. Lastly, I just wanted to touch on food and water in Enshrouded. It works very similar to Valheim, in that basically food and water items aren't needed, but rather provide your character with different buffs to complement your chosen playstyle. You might want food that increases your max health, or things that extend your stamina, affect mana regen, that sort of thing. It's a cool system, and gives you a reason to go and source various different types of food depending on your group, which is pretty nice. That said, not needing food and water does sort of diminish the whole survival aspect of the game, and to be honest, I don't even necessarily think this can be called a survival game at the end of the day. It's easy, there's no needs or desires that you have to keep up with for your character, and I'm just not sure it's right to call it a survival game without those things in place. So, to wrap things up, Enshrouded was a pleasant surprise and a genuinely enjoyable experience for me that I'd recommend to anyone else who's looking at purchasing for solo based playthroughs. The game is currently 27 US dollars, which I'd say is a fair price for the amount of content available to a solo player. That said, I don't think co-op has been implemented in a meaningful fashion with Enshrouded, and as such, I'd actually recommend holding off on a purchase if you're wanting to play with friends friends for now just to see if they get to fixing the issues with progression for individuals that we talked about earlier in the video. It's a real shame because by all accounts Enshrouded is a good game, but with maybe a month or two more in the oven it could have been developed into a truly brilliant experience that solidified itself as a champion of early access titles. Obviously with it being early access, Enshrouded may well continue to develop into an experience that fixes some of the gripes the community has right now and it is still a solid purchase, but for me it comes down to simply buy it for single player, wait for co-op. Thanks for watching folks, I hope you got something useful from this video and I will see you all in the next one.